Maker Place Coordinator here at Midland Public Library, and welcome to week three of Maker Card Games. For this week, I'd like to look at geographical and historical placement of card games. And specifically, I'd like to focus on Scopa, which is a game that's played predominantly in Italy and Northern Africa. It has a long historical standing. It's not always called Scopa, but the complicated point system and the math calculations that are involved are quite always consistent. The game I'll show you in just a moment, but I want to talk about its aesthetic for a moment. The etchings on the cards are really quite beautiful, especially if you look back in the history of this card game. Some of those etchings are no longer printed or copyrighted, so I found one of those and I've taken that antique look and recreated it using our laser cutter. If you like a tutorial on laser cutting, stay tuned on our YouTube channel. Here's how you play Scopa. Within the Scopa card deck, there are four different types of cards. There's the leaf, this is represented by one here, cups, represented by two, swords, represented by three, and our coins, which is represented by four here. Just like a regular card deck, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the knight represents eight, the queen represents 9, and the king represents 10. This is how the point system works. You get one point for just having the 7 of coins in your pile at the end of the game. You get another point for having the most cards. There is another point for having the most coin cards, and there's another point for having Primera. Primera is really the amount of cards that have the highest card count. And I'll explain that in just a moment to you. Following that, I'll explain what a point for every Scopa means by revealing how the game is played. To confuse the game further, within the point system, there is a specific count of cards, which is called Primera. So for every seven, you're going to count 21 counts. For every six, you're going to count 18 counts. Ones represent 16 counts. Fours, or sorry, five here represents 15. Four is 14. Three, 13. Two is 12 counts. And every knight represents 10 counts. Whoever has the most counts after adding their card counts together wins another point at the end of the game. How the game works is a dealer is appointed. He or she deals out three cards to each player and four cards in the middle of the table face up. For our purposes today, I'll show you the deck of my opponent and myself, and my opponent will go first because he sits beside the dealer and the entire game works in right rotation. My opponent thinks he's pretty smart because he has a king, and a king has a 10 count. The object of the game is to collect as many cards as possible, and you can do this through creating sums. So he is going to sum 6 plus 4 to equal the 10 and collect all three of these cards. Now, I, on the other hand, I feel I'm a little bit more strategic in my planning here, because I have a 6 of coins, and I know that the six has a higher count than the cards that my opponent had just collected, even though he collected two of the coin cards. There's another coin card here, so I have an advantage of collecting two as well, and also getting the higher point card. Six is three plus three, and not only did I just earn a potential two points, but I earned a scopa because I collected the four cards, the entire, well, not the four cards, but all the cards that were in the middle are gone now. I was the last to take the last card, and that's considered a scopa. For each scopa, it's usually represented when you have a pile like this to flip one of your cards over to represent one of your scopas. You count all your scopas at the end, they each represent a single point. To continue on with the game, the dealer then puts four other cards from their dealing in the middle of the table face up and you begin the whole process over again. If you need to pick up more cards because you've run out through collection, then you just simply pick up three as you go. 
and the person at the end who collects all of the card, picks up the last card from the deck, collects all of the cards in the middle, but a point is not collected for Scopa at that point. Thanks for playing Scopa with me today. If you'd like to learn how I created these cards using our laser cutter, a tutorial will be released on our YouTube channel shortly. Bye for now, everyone.